morning. Welcome to Lebanon Church. Good to see all of you here. It's good that you're able to join us by video, trusting that God will bless us together. We're continuing our study this morning of Joseph and his life. Uh, we'll be thinking this morning of Joseph and his dreams. This morning, our call to worship comes from Philippians 2, verses 8 through 11, which speaks to the, the exalted position that Jesus Christ holds as we worship this morning. Christ Jesus, being found in appearance as a man, humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's lift our hearts to Jesus in a silent prayer and ask that he would prepare us for worship. We've come to worship our God, who is our creator, our redeemer, and our comforter. And from him, grace and peace are yours. From God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And to this, God's people said, Amen. Amen. God's welcomed us as his children, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us welcome one another. As we stand, let's continue to lift our voices in praise of God.
seated. We've been singing of God's grace. God's word speaks to our need for his grace from Romans 3, verses 9 through 20. What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? Not at all. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike, that's all of us, that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. We're all under the power of sin. As it is written. Listen to this. This is God's word. There is no one righteous. There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing, bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways in the way of peace. They do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. Let's pray to God. There is no excuse, Lord, that we can bring to you. There is no excuse that can justify or explain or excuse our sin. We confess that you are right when you look upon us, when you know and see and remind us of the things that we have done the things we have said, the things we have wanted that have been against your will. There is not one of us here this morning, not one of us here, who is innocent, and blameless before you. Help us, Lord, to see our great need for the cross of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice for our sins. Apart from you and your death on the cross, apart from you, we would have nowhere else to turn. And our sin would cling to us. And your condemnation would fall upon us. You have set us free from that which we could never free ourselves. Help us, Lord, to embrace your gift of forgiveness and to receive the peace that your word of grace speaks to us. For Jesus, amen. This is God's promise of grace, his word of grace to us from Romans 3. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. The question is, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you trust Jesus, not your goodness, not your efforts to try to make your sin right or to pay for sin by yourselves or do your do favors for God to make you right in his sight. The question God's word puts before you this morning is, do you believe in Jesus Christ? This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. 
God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. Let's sing together. couple of uh, announcements, reminders, updates for you, and then we'll get into some prayer requests that you're going to be thinking of this morning. Um, have you heard, have you heard that Carmel Church is coming closer to a time where their congregation is going to decide whether to extend a call to uh, a minister, a pastor that uh, they have under consideration? We should be in prayer for Carmel Church. This is a, a big moment for them. You know, they've been vacant. They've been without a senior pastor for three and a half years already. It's a long time. And this is a season of discernment for Carmel Church and for this pastor who they may decide to call. And in this season of discernment, it's important that everybody gains clarity about what God's will is for them. So let's be in prayer for them. I got a text last night from Arlo and Levon Bonama about their grandson, Ryer. He was flown from Orange City Hospital to uh, Sanford Hospital. He's in the children's hospital there in the castle. And he has a case of rhinovirus. So he's got a lot of congestion um, and he's in intensive care for this. Um, responding well to the care, but uh, still in intensive care. And uh, our prayers for Derek and Alexis' son, Ryer, would be very much appreciated. So how did I do so far? Anything else that needs to be added? 
Okay, so that's the prayer request for Ryer. Um, there's an update on Emmett Haverhalls. So let us know. Emmett is in Sioux Falls. Emmett is in Sioux Falls. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? When did he come home? They traveled yesterday. And uh, at home yesterday afternoon. Got home yesterday afternoon. Amazing. Amazing. So they're getting reacquainted with, with their... They will have doctor's appointments this week, and they can't, the first week they're not supposed to have anybody come. They just have to get adjusted, and so we'll get to see them the week after this. They're not supposed to have anybody come, but they probably don't want anybody to come. Let's just be home for a bit, and, and for the first week, let's just kind of settle into to what, what home looks like. But for Emmett, for Mark and Molly, for Clara, a homecoming finally. Mark sent a picture of Clara, and she was on her bed and jumping as high as she could. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Clara's jumping on the bed. And Emmett was in front of the fireplace playing with his toys. So. Oh. So they had a good night together. Emmett's playing with his toys. Clara's jumping on the bed, which is allowed for the first week, I'm sure. <laughs> then back down from that, we'll see if that works. This is wonderful. What a gift from God. What a gift from God. You know, they rang a, a, a bell or a chime or something um, to leave the hospital. They needed... They needed a brass band by the time they got to, to Sioux Falls. <laughs> Sounds like they made their own. We are so, so grateful and rejoicing with you, Robert and Val, and with your family. Something we've prayed for for so many days and weeks with you. Praise God. Okay, let's top that. We probably won't. That is a huge gift from God. But you may have other things, prayer requests. What else should we remember today? Yes. We've been praying for Dwayne Metalma. Yes. And I work with his wife. She had a stroke at work on Thursday, which was very scary for us all. Um, she's home. They weren't able to find it. They ended up having to send her to Sioux Falls to find it because Hayward doesn't have an MRI. And they were able to find a small clot Give her the clot buster shot and got it broke up and all of the numbness and strength and feeling came back to her right hand and leg. Um, and she got to come home Friday night. So, prayers for her that she'll rest. They're not very good at that. And Dwayne has chemo this week, so they're preparing for that as well. So Dwayne and <coughs> Dwayne Bonema, we've been praying for his ongoing Care and chemo has been rough on him, but has given him more days to enjoy with his family. But, and I'm the only one in the room who doesn't know Mrs. <coughs> Dwayne Bunnama's name. Leanne. 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 So you said Leanne uh, experienced a stroke at work. But... Uh, Taking her to Sioux Falls, they were able to locate a clot, they were able to break up that clot, and the effects of that, of, of that blockage, the numbness, that all seemed to resolve. She was able to return home Friday, you said? Yep, Friday night. So, a scare and a blessing. We'll pray for Leanne's uh, recovery and that... Uh, she behaves herself. Thank you. Else? Harry? Uh, in men's Bible study Wednesday night, uh, a number of us grandfathers were talking about uh, our grandkids that have, are making profession of faith or recently have made profession of faith. And then also the fact that not just our grandkids, but all of us. I'll say we just don't want to leave it alone either. So, you know, prayer for thankfulness for, for those that are professing their faith or thinking about professing their faith, but also just 
God's goodness on the, on our kids and our grandkids and us. We try to walk the path. So to summarize, first of all, just joy in, in witnessing um, the professions of faith of grandchildren and that they're, they're responding to God with their lives and with their, their hearts and with their faith. Um, so prayers of thanksgiving for that, but also prayers for our loved ones, those in our circle, um, who that all of us may respond to the work of God in our hearts, that, that all of us would uh, continue to, to uh, grow in our faith and our walk with God, and especially, especially for our children and grandchildren that we be, give, be given the privilege of seeing that. Val, and then Lloyd. Our brother-in-law, Ed Jameson, surgery tomorrow. Um, he had surgery several months ago for a broken femur, and they put a rod in, and somehow that rod has moved and is giving him extreme pain. Um, Ed is in his early 90s, so it will be kind of a tough surgery. This is Ed Jensen, your brother-in-law, who will have surgery this week, <coughs> tomorrow, surgery tomorrow, um, had a broken leg, they repaired it with a rod that's not where it's supposed to be now and that needs to be repaired again by surgery tomorrow. So we'll be praying for, for that procedure tomorrow that it gives him relief from the pain that he has right now. Lloyd. Um, this won't talk but I have uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, about five weeks ago, we prayed for uh, uh, Lucy Youngberg, who was the wife of one of my sales reps that had her colon ruptured. She has been able to return home and is able to work from home. Her recovery has been way faster than they had anticipated. So her recovery from that, that odd ruptured colon has been more rapid than what they they foresaw, and that's that's an answer to prayer too. That was Lucy Youngberg. Youngberg. <coughs> Give thanks for that. Berlin. Just for God's creation and the wisdom that he put into it, as it might seem early, but the seasons are changing, and you see migration, and uh, animals coming out of hibernation, and, and just the beautiful weather. Yeah. In God's wisdom and kindness, the gift of spring beauty that you can see in that wisdom that, that he's woven into the creation that he's made for us to enjoy. Who am I missing over here? I've been paying attention to the to my left, your right. Anybody? I was saving that one, but our, uh, our nephew Mitch, who fell and has been in intensive care for a long time, he is out of intensive care. And uh, the past couple of weeks now, he's made steady progress in recovery and, and healing. So grateful for, for that gift, too. A lot of good stories this morning. Ken. So I'll say them in reverse order, Ken. For Lloyd Vanderscaff, he's going. He's beginning radiation. Wally, yep. Wally Vanderscaff. Wally. Thank you.
and of course for the Marvanatop family uh, who passed. It, yeah, exactly a week ago, right? Right. Um, had a brain tumor. It's a sad loss for a family. Um, really, young man, young grandpa. Um, it's going to hit the whole community around Hull fairly hard, too, and be remembering Marv and his family. And we'll be remembering you as well, Ken. A couple of weeks from now, you'll uh, have a procedure to, um, by God's grace, get your heart back in rhythm again. Remember that, too. Anyone else? Forgive what I can't hear, but God hears and knows. Let's pray to him now. Lord, this morning we find we have many reasons to give you praise and thanksgiving. Praise for all that you are able to do and thanksgiving that the things you do are things that bless and help and encourage us. On this beautiful Lord's Day morning, Lord, we look at the creation around us. We see your creation coming to life once again, awakening once again to, the, to warming temperatures and the, the promise of a new season of life and growth. What a marvelous creation you've made and the rhythms that you've woven into that creation, Lord, Remind us of how wise you are in your care for us. We thank you for the season that we're able to enjoy this morning. We're thankful that we may come to this place to remember and hear your word of grace and goodness to us. You've given us more than a second chance, Lord Jesus. You've given us a new beginning, a new creation that is already beginning its work in our hearts through the Holy Spirit will come to its fullness one day when you make all things new. Lord, we pray that you would help us to set our hearts on that day. Until that day, Lord, we pray for the work of the mission and ministry of your church. We're grateful today, Lord, that our fellow churches today are remembering us, Lebanon Church, in prayer before you this morning. And Lord, we remember that we do need and depend on your help and provision and leading so much. And as you bless us, Lord, help us to be a blessing with the things that you've placed in our hands and the opportunities that you present before us. Help us, Lord, to be faithful. Pray for Carmel Church and for the pastor there considering for a call. We pray, Lord, in this season of discernment for all of them that you would make plain your will for them. And we pray that you would soon provide leadership for Carmel Church. We also ask, Lord, that you would provide leadership in time for Inwood Church, Haywarden Church, and our brothers and sisters in New Holland, South Dakota. We pray that where there is a longing for pastoral leadership, you would satisfy that longing soon. Remember, we pray, Sos and Kara, Steve and Tara, grateful Lord for our mission partners, and we ask today for your strength and blessing for them. Thank you, Father, for the prayers that you've answered. This morning, our hearts are filled with joy at Emmett's homecoming. For Mark and Molly and Clara and Emmett, Lord, we pray that you would receive the glory and the thanks for all of the prayers that you've answered for the, the long road that you saw them through. We pray that you would help Emmett to stay stable and strong in health and strength. Thank you for the prayers that you are answering for nephew Mitch. 
he's able to come out of intensive care with the signs of recovery and renewal that we see in him. We are so grateful, Lord, for that blessing. We thank you for being with Leanne Bonama this past week through a scare of a stroke. And through treatment, Lord, we are grateful that you provided her recovery from that stroke. We pray for your blessing that she may regain complete strength once again. We ask that you would be with Dwayne Bunnema as he receives another round of chemotherapy this week. We pray that that chemotherapy would be a blessing to him and, and help him as, as hard as it is to receive that. Thank you for being with Lucy Youngberg and for the rapid recovery that you gave to her following her, her ruptured colon. We're so grateful, Lord, for that blessing of recovery you've given. We thank you, too, for the signs of the work of your Holy Spirit that many of us see in, in the lives of our children and grandchildren. For the opportunity that those of us of grandparents have to witness the professions of faith, the response of faith to you, Lord, we give you praise and thanksgiving. For some of us, Lord, we are still waiting for that response, or we see our children or grandchildren walking a difficult and complicated and painful path. They're wrestling with you, Lord, and you're wrestling with them. Pray that you would remember each of them. Lord, we, we commend each of our children and grandchildren to you and your purposes. Bring them your blessing, we pray. Pray today that you would be with Ryer. Bless the care that he's receiving in Sioux Falls. Lord, we're grateful for doctors and places that we can bring our sick children. Most of all, Lord, we're grateful that we can bring them to you. Trust that in those places and with those doctors, above all, that your blessing, your presence, your Holy Spirit will hold them. We pray that you would be with Derek and Alexa as well as they wait for signs of recovery and healing. Be with Ed Jensen through surgery tomorrow. Pray that the surgery would relieve his pain. Be with Wally Vanderskaff as he receives radiation treatment. Pray that that would be effective for him. We do pray, Lord, for your continuing comfort for the Marv Vanderkoff family. Such a young father and grandfather be taken too soon humanly speaking, from that household. He will be missed. Lord, may the promises and comfort you give in Jesus Christ strengthen that family. Remember Willie and Greta today and their neighbors, Crown Point Estates, May each of them, Lord, be cheered and comforted by the knowledge that according to your promises in Romans 8, your love for them cannot and will never be broken. All of these things, Lord, we lift to you with thankful hearts in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Our first offering this morning is for the church budget. The second offering is for Habitat for Humanity.
Let's stand and sing. Please reach for your Bibles. On page 36, you will find Genesis 37, page 36. This is the beginning of the account of the life of Joseph, the son of Jacob. We were at the end of the story last week where Joseph confessed that you, my brothers, meant everything you did to me for evil, but God meant it for good, and God accomplished his good purposes. Well, how did God do that? And now we're going to trace some of what God did, beginning today, beginning with Genesis 37, verse 1. Let's pray. Lord, before us, we have your word. Open that word to our minds and to our hearts, that we may understand your work for us, that we may believe your blessing to us, and that we may grow in your love for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Genesis 37, verse 1. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending flocks with his brothers, the sons of Billa and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel, that is Jacob, now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he made a richly ornamented robe for him or sometimes a robe of many colors. 
When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to the dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheep rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? They hated him all the more because of his dream, what he had said. Then he had another dream and told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun, moon, and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as, as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have two questions for you this morning that we're going to be working through in the, in the message today. Don't you wish, here's the first question, don't you wish that God would give you a sign that would confirm that he is real and that all of his promises and all of his work are real and, and, they're, and they're for us. Don't you wish God would give a clear sign, something, something more compelling, more compelling than the Bible and sermons and talk about Jesus? Don't you wish you could see or hear something of God directly? Wouldn't that help? And the second question is this, if God would give that sign to you, how would you handle it? How would you handle it? We're going to talk about Joseph. Joseph. In his coat of many colors. Ah, special Joseph. Only 17 years old. He goes out and, and he, he looks at what his brothers are doing, taking care of the sheep, and they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So he goes back to his dad and he tells, he tells dad what his brothers are doing. He gives a bad report. You know, Joseph's special. Daddy loved Joseph. Daddy made a special coat for Joseph. Coat of many colors. He didn't give a coat of many colors, a, a, a nice coat to the other brothers. It was only to Joseph that, that he gave that honor. Joseph's so special. And then Joseph has these dreams. He dreams that, that they're all out in the field harvesting wheat or barley or whatever it is, but they're making sheaves. And and, and the sheaves are, are bundles that they, that they put together, gathering what they're harvesting. And in the dream, Joseph's sheaf stands straight up. And the sheaf of barley or wheat of the brothers all fall and bow down to Joseph's. And then he has another dream. And he looks and he sees the sun and the moon and the stars and the heavens. Eleven stars. And somehow, I wonder what that looked like in the dream. Do you wonder what that looked like in the dream to have stars and moon and sun bow down? What does that look like? But they did. And they bowed down to Joseph. Joseph's so special. The brothers hated him. They hated Joseph for being a tattletale. They hated Joseph for being the special son of his daddy. And they hated Joseph for having these dreams that said that Joseph would be special and that everybody else would bow down to him. Joseph's so special. And you would hate him too. Because Joseph gets all the attention 
Joseph gets all the glory, and everybody else has to honor Joseph. He probably even gets a special place to sit. Except, think about these dreams. I've tried this. When I was, when I was a little boy, I tried this. You ever tried this when you're, when you're dreaming? To, to figure out when you're dreaming that it's actually a dream, that you recognize it's a dream, and then you try to tell other people in the dream that this is actually a dream and that it's not real. I have tried to do that, but I've, I've not ever been able to do it because when I'm in the dream, it seems real. And I always forget to do that. We can't choose the dreams that we have. It's not that Joseph decided to have this dream of the sheaf or the dreams of sun, moon, and stars. And you know this too. You know that, that these dreams that came to Joseph, they came from God. The dreams came from God. And when the brothers are arguing with Joseph, and even, even Father Jacob, Father Israel, is arguing with Joseph about what these dreams mean. Well, we actually bow down to you, Joseph. You think you're that special? Actually, they're not arguing with Joseph. They're arguing with God. They're arguing with God. Because God gave the dream. Wouldn't you like to have some kind of confirmation, some kind of sign, some indication, something compelling that tells you that God is real? Joseph's family did. Joseph's family knew that, that God was speaking to Joseph. They had to know this. And how did they handle it? They didn't welcome it. Just one more reminder that Joseph is special, that Joseph is set apart, that Joseph gets the nice things, the nice chair and the nice coat and the nice dreams and the nice position where he's the good one who can tell the bad report on his brother. You see, God is setting Joseph up setting him aside. He's setting him aside for some purpose that even Joseph doesn't understand yet. Joseph doesn't understand his position. But God's doing something. God's doing something that coat of many colors. Then there's Jesus. Is Jesus. Get your Bibles out. Page 922. You see, the, th the same thing happens to Jesus. And we read of this in Matthew 26. See if you catch the parallel between Joseph being special and Jesus being special. Matthew 26, beginning at verse 59. Again, that was page 922. <coughs> you have Matthew 26, verse 59. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death, but they did not find any. So many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two of them came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony these men are bringing against you? Jesus remains silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Tell 
tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, in the future, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming in the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now, do you, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Christ, who hit you. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. I am the Christ, Son of God. Jesus was special too, and the religious leaders hated that. Jesus would go and hang out with sinners. He would hang out with prostitutes. He would hang out with cheats. He would hang out with tax collectors. He would make room and time for the worst people around. And then you know what Jesus would do? He would forgive them. He would say they were forgiven. Only God can say that, right? Only God can, can forgive the sin that has been committed against God. But Jesus, he's so special. He's He's going around saying things that only God can say. And then Jesus is going around and he's doing miracles. He's feeding multitudes with a handful of bread. He's healing sick people. He's walking on water. He's raising the dead. He's doing things that only God can do. Saying things that only God can say and doing things that only God can do. And Jesus is so special. And then, of all things... Jesus comes to the religious leaders, and those are the ones who are represented in Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, the ones who are very serious about following the laws of God, the Sadducees, the ones who are, are so concerned about maintaining the traditions of the temple. The religious leaders, the nice people, the good people of Jerusalem, and Jesus has no time for them. In fact, you know what Jesus says? This Jesus who, who goes around talking like God and acting like God, and he comes to the people who are special to God, they think. And Jesus, you know what he calls them? He calls them hypocrites. He calls them hypocrites. They were honest, they were clean, they were good, and Jesus dismisses them. They hated him. Jesus is so special. What would you do if you saw, what would you do if you heard that God was in our midst? unmistakable proof that the power of God was at work right in front of your face, what would you do? Would you like that? The Son of God, the Christ of God, is standing in front of the Sanhedrin, in front of the religious leaders, and he's saying who he is. They're hearing who he is. And they spit at him. And they beat him up. And they find a way to kill Jesus. Just like Joseph's brothers to Joseph, Jesus says, one day I will have a special place to sit, and you will see it. You will see that I have the honor of the Most Holy One. That I'm going to be the one who, who holds all authority over all things, and authority over you, too. That's what Jesus is saying. I'm going to have a special seat. They don't want him to have that special seat.
They don't want Jesus telling us how to live. They don't want Jesus telling us who God truly is, who God accepts, and on what terms God accepts them. They don't want Jesus to have that position. You see, when God comes close to us, we don't necessarily like what we see and what we hear. When, when, when Jesus comes close to us, actually one of the things that happens is that he reveals our hearts. He reveals who we are. It's not just about showing God being real. It's showing what's really inside of us. And what's really inside of us doesn't necessarily want God to be God. And that's a problem. We don't want God to be God. God doesn't want us to sin, but we want to sin, and so we do sin. And we want God to be quiet, and we want God to be at a distance. We don't want God taking charge of our lives and telling us what to do with our time, what to do with our loves, what to do with our money, what to do with our future. We want to be free to decide those things. We want to sit in the chair. We want to be special. That's a place saved for God. And what God shows us, first of all, He's got to do some work in our hearts. Make us ready to welcome him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we say we love you and we say we honor you, honor you with our lips and with our songs. But we know and you know that with too much of our lives, we try to sit in the chair that belongs to you. We want to be special. We want to be great. We want to do as we please instead of what pleases you. Lord, our, our resentment of your, of your word, of your place over our lives, that resentment shows us who we really are and that we need you to do some work in our hearts. Put to death the things that are sinful and wrong and hateful. That it's our old nature that needs to die. That it's wrong for us to want your word to die. Do that work in our hearts, we pray, as painful as that might be, for the sake of your glory and so that we can receive your blessing. Amen. Stand and sing.
bless you, keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. And let God's people say,